Hello crafty friends, I'm Lean from Studio Kato and I'm so happy to be back with another video today for Spellbinders. I am using the new Halloween Better Press collection from Spellbinders to create not one, not two, but seven <laughs> clean and simple card designs. I'm showing you three ways that I like to create my clean and simple card designs and I have obviously plenty of examples for each one. But let's start out with actually introducing you to the better press plates. This is the new Open If You Dare Bread better press plate from Spellbinders. It comes with two plates, the main skeleton image and then that Open If You Dare sentiment. So that sentiment is definitely going to be used on multiple cards for me. Uh, this is the Halloween icon set. It's so, so large. There are 10 images in here and then there is one uh, sentiment better press plate that uh, creates eight sentiments at once and you have a coordinating die for those sentiment strips as well. So a lot of images to work with but I'm going to start with the skeleton and for the skeleton I was going to do a little bit more detailed watercoloring so I am working on the Kenson Arches Cold Press Watercolor Paper. This is cotton paper, which is perfect for the Better Press system, uh, but it's not the uh, Better Press uh, cotton paper from Spellbinders. So this is watercolor paper and it's going to hold up a lot better for watercoloring. I lined up my image and my sentiment onto the Better Press system. Uh, this is a magnetic insert, um, so it holds the plates nicely in place, so you can ink it up with the Better Press ink. I always ink them up very, very carefully, so it's a great impression. So I do spend quite a bit of time inking up these plates, especially when they have large black areas. Um, but once that's done, it's really simple. You just roll it through your die cutting machine and it presses that design into the cardstock. It's so, so stunning. I'm going to do all of my better pressing all at once. Um, so I can put this machine away once it's done. I'm just admiring the um, impression there and then we have those little ghosts this is the better press porcelain cotton paper because i don't have to do a ton of water coloring on this so this is going to give me a beautiful smooth look um i mean the the uh, plate is going to be nicely impressed into the cardstock, but the cardstock itself is a lot smoother than that cotton watercolor cardstock I used before. So it's perfect for those super clean and simple cards with these little ghosts. I'm also going to use the grave with the crow on top. Uh, I'm going to better press that a little bit off to the side. Do keep in mind that the side you line it up on, on the chase, is going to be the opposite side you get the image. And I do want to point out, because I had a little bit of inking left on my chase on that magnetic uh, plate, um, the ink transferred to my cotton cardstock. So in the future, I'll be, I'll be making sure that the ink is um, cleaned off of my chase before I make another card. But I took care of that really simply with a, um, with a sand eraser, so that worked out nicely. Now these two images I am going to just impress onto the cotton, the porcelain better press cardstock from Spellbinders, but I'm going to trim these out so I really only need them on one corner there. And again, I got some ink on the chase and I'm going to quickly wipe that off before I ruin that part of the cardstock as well. Because this cardstock is quite expensive, so you know that I'll be definitely uh, keeping all of the tiny scraps I have. Now I think I have better pressed almost everything. There will be some backgrounds later on, but let's get into some water coloring. So this, uh, these are the really clean and simple ones. It's just an image and a sentiment. That is the first super easy design you can do. And I am just going to add some watercolor to these. 
I've sped up the watercoloring quite a bit. Um, this actually took me, I think, 15 minutes to color this image. For the other ones, I didn't check. They were really, really simple to color, uh, those little ghosts. But this one is a little bit more detailed and I wanted to add some shading as well. I'm going to start off with the chest and I'm going to leave the skeleton for last um, because if I get some brown paint on the skeleton, I can still lift it off if it's not colored yet. But if the skeleton is already painted in, it's a lot harder to lift off any mistakes that I make uh, with the other colors of paint. Now these press plates are so detailed, you don't really have to do much in the terms of shading at all. I do try to shade this a little bit, but I found that the wood grain and even the little cross hatches of shading on the pumpkin do so much of the work for you. Um, the painting is pretty easy, you don't have to add much to this. And again, I do think this looked just as good before I colored it in. I think the press plates are such a gorgeous design even if you don't add any color to them. And in fact, I uh, do think the letter press effect, uh, some of that gets lost if you color it in. It's not, it's not actually lost. It is still <laughs> impressed into the cardstock. The water doesn't affect the cardstock in a way that the impression gets lost. Um, but that deboss effect is a lot less noticeable when just looking at it if there's color added to it. So sometimes I think I'm just going to not color these in. I feel like it's a lot more interesting to watch <laughs> me uh, make this with a little bit of color so there's more steps to it and it's maybe more interesting for a video but I do want to point out that if this wasn't made for a video, maybe I wouldn't have added color to uh, some of these cards. I think that would be really fun too. And again, that letterpress effect would be a little bit more noticeable that way. Now on the porcelain better press cardstock, the porcelain is the color, it's the whitest cardstock available. It's a very nice white. It's not too like bluish white. It's a really nice warm white. Um, it's a little bit more tricky to paint, so I use very watered down paint and build up my layers very carefully. Because the ink or the paint does sink into the paper a little bit more and it's harder to move it around once it's set. When you're familiar with watercoloring, you know that um, watercolor can be lifted off of most watercolor cardstock um, by just uh, just scraping it off with your brush really um, but on the better press cardstock that is pretty much impossible to do so I'm very careful I paint in very light layers build up the color in steps and that's just so I avoid mistakes and it makes shading it easier because for these ghosts I want to shade them by going from a really pale blue to a white and for that I need a nice transition from blue to white and that's pretty hard to achieve if you can't um, if you can't lift off the color. Now these are those Better Press sentiment strips. I uh, press them with the black Better Press ink onto the Pebble cardstock, which is the gray Better Press cardstock from Spellbinders. And I'm just propping them up on some foam tape to finish these off. But again, these are the super simple cards in this video. These are just the images better pressed onto my card panel. Uh, they're just A2 size card panels, so it's a really clean look. And then I just add a gray sentiment strip on top with some foam tape. To step it up a little bit, you can treat these better press plates like stamps, really. So I, again, you already saw me better press these uh, main images, but now I'm going to make the backgrounds. Um, I have this spiderweb background from Spellbinders, uh, and I'm going to press this onto the Pebble cardstock, the Pebble better press cardstock. 
Now, all of the better press plates that are supposed to be backgrounds that go edge to edge, uh, they are slightly larger than A2 size. So it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. I love that Spellbinders does this. They do the same for their hot foil plates and it definitely makes creating with them a little easier. I'm making these loops from the Best Ever Craft Tape to adhere the pebble cardstock to the uh, platen, which is the um, that clear plate on top. But I am uh, rubbing them over my arm or adhering them to my arm a couple times to get rid of some of that stick. I find that the better press cardstock is super fragile. So you need a super low tech tape with them or you need to make your tape a little bit lower tech. And just um, adhering it to your clothes works a little better, but I didn't have long sleeves. Um, so this was easier <laughs> to show you on camera. But usually I stick it to my clothes a few times. It picks up the fibers of your clothes and it just removes some of that stick from the adhesive. I'm inking this plate up again with the Better Press Black Ink. Um, there are a ton of new colors available as well. There's two new sets of little ink pads and so eight new colors. Um, they're really, really stunning. I don't think I've used any of the new ones. Maybe the next one is a new ink. I'm not sure. Now for this one, I want to work on colored cardstock and you've probably already seen my trick to better press on colored cardstock, but the key is two parts. One of them is a paper towel. So I just cut a paper towel, ta paper towel down to A2 size and I adhere it very securely to the platen. Why do I adhere it so securely? Because the next part might make the paper buckle a little bit. And that's the only difficulty with this trick, by the way. Um, so the next part, this is some buttercup cardstock and you see on the back of it, I already tested out <laughs> some of my inks that I wanted to use for this. Um, I am going to um, spray this with water on the back of the cardstock. I'm going to lift off most of the water with another paper towel, but this is going to loosen the fibers of the cardstock a little bit and give us a better letterpress impression. Now the water does make the paper buckle a little bit. So again, you want to adhere your paper down very well, but I found that if your paper towel is adhered down very well as well, um, that already helps. Because if your paper buckles, uh, it might touch the better press plate uh, when it's not supposed to. And that creates a halo effect where you have two inkings right next to each other and we don't want that. So uh, to avoid this paper buckling, adhere it down very well and uh, that should remove <laughs> any problems uh, from this trick. So with the paper towel, you create a little bit of padding and with the... Uh, with the water, you loosen the fibers of the cardstock and that means that this is going to create just as good an impression in the colored cardstock as you got on the Better Press cotton cardstock. So I'm going to use the Tuscan uh, Better Press ink, which is a really nice dark yellow. And I am going to ink up the Pumpkins and Ghosts uh, Better Press plate, a stunning Halloween sentiment background uh, with that dark yellow ink and this is going to impress so nicely on that light yellow cardstock it's such a good look I love that tone on tone better press look and obviously you could ink blend your cotton cardstock to be yellow but this is let's be honest a lot a lot easier and a lot less time consuming now with both of these backgrounds down, let's get them turned into cards. I'm just going to adhere these down onto top folding A2 size note cards. And I'm just using liquid glue for that because that's easiest for me. If you want to create a simple frame around these, you could just trim them down and have that white margin of the note card frame your background. That would be nice too. But again, my goal was clean and simple cards and I'm keeping them as clean and simple as possible. Now, if you remember, I better pressed a couple of images just separately and I colored them in off screen or off camera and I cut them out. You can definitely still tell they're better pressed. Uh, you still have that debossed look on them. 
Um, but this is sort of like I would use my stems. I just trim them down with some paper scissors or I trim them out with some scissors and I prop them up with some foam tape. And that's a really clean and simple look. And with that better press effect or that letter press effect, you get a stunning clean and simple Halloween card. For one, I added one of those sentiment strips, and this is actually hot foiled on black cardstock with that better press plate. And I will soon, hopefully soon, have a video out on how to hot foil with the better press plates. So that's coming up. Definitely subscribe to my channel if you want to um, be notified when that video goes up. Now I saved my favorites for last and if you stuck around to this point you're going to get a little bit of a treat here. Um, this is again a really simple better press panel, just one single image on there. I painted it really quickly with my watercolors, just some simple shading and I'm going to add some orange for the pumpkin. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create masks for my images. And that is going to allow me to do some inking around them. And uh, this creates such a dramatic effect for the ghost card and a really fun abstract background for that uh, grave card as well. So I love masking off my images for clean and simple cards and you can definitely do that with better press designs as well. What I did is I just uh, better pressed the uh, images with a pale blue ink because, um, well, looking back on it, I could have impressed it with what, uh, black ink as well. It wouldn't have affected my ink blending. But I always like to do this in light ink, so I know it's a mask. I, I don't know why I do this. <laughs> um, it's just on cheap cardstock, and I didn't bother to make a letterpress effect with this. I just temporarily adhered it down over top of my image, and then I can ink blend around it without covering my image or my little painted ghost. Once again, I have used the Spellbinders Better Press Cotton cardstock for this. This is again the porcelain cardstock and um, this is great for ink blending by the way. <laughs> it really, really was easy to ink blend over top of this. I'm using Concord and Ninth inks and the little green minty one is from Pink Fresh Studio. I'm just using a blending or blending brushes to blend these on. I find blending brushes give me a much nicer, smoother blend than those blending foams we used to use. And uh, I'm just going darker and darker around the edges. Just around the ghost is the lightest area. And um, I am using a post-it note behind, be, uh, beneath my fingers. Just so I don't pick up any of that dark ink with my fingers, it would leave fingerprints on the ink ba inked background where I lift off the ink with my fingers. But also if I pick up the dark ink and set my fingers on the lighter part, it's not pretty. So just putting a post-it note underneath your hand really, really helps. <laughs> I finish off the edges with Versafine Onyx Black Ink, which is the darkest black ink, and then I can lift off that image very carefully because the adhesive I use um, is not actually temporarily temporary adhesive, it's just not great adhesive. But I do need a adhesive eraser uh, to take off some of those spots there. It didn't damage my paper at all. I just had to be a little bit careful while removing it. And there was still some stickiness left on the painted ghost there. So I just took care of that with the adhesive eraser. You could just use masking tape or masking paper uh, for to create these masks that would be a lot simpler and you wouldn't have to worry about your temporary adhesive I still don't have masking paper I've been a card maker for so many years now and I don't have masking paper in my stash I always forget to buy it too because <laughs> I've been saying this for years it's a miracle that I don't have masking paper yet because I've wanted it for a long time. Now for this grave, I did some dirty watercoloring, just some grays, and I dropped in a couple greens as well while the paint was still wet. And that is going to achieve like a mossy look on the gravestone. 
Now to add a little bit of interest to this, I'm going to create a ripped edge on this note card. Just on the bottom of it, this is slightly smaller than A2. I have trimmed it down and I am going to rip that edge at the bottom and I'm even going to create some like more dramatic uh, rips as well uh, that really go up into that card or in the card panel. So I just, there's n really no rhyme or reason to this. I just do what feels right. Some are higher than others. Um, and yeah, this is just really fun. I was, well, usually it's a lot of fun. Uh, this was still fun, but this is that expensive better press card stock. So I was a little bit more careful <laughs> than I usually am. And I think it shows. I think the rip and the tears is a little bit too controlled. Um, usually I would be a little bit less careful with this and I like that look a lot better but for the better press cardstock I wasn't going to take any chances I didn't want to waste the panel of it I'm just going to adhere that mask down uh, with some best ever craft tape and then I'm going to carefully mask off just an angled section at the bottom I say carefully and what I mean there is that I am again removing some of the stick of the adhesive before I put it on that better press cotton cardstock because again the better press cotton cardstock is very fragile you have to be careful with its feelings <laughs> and um, remove the tape very carefully and definitely remove some of the stick of the tape before you stick it down. I am going to create three sections here. The largest one is the lightest and then I'm going to move my tape down a little bit, change the angle and move up a shade of ink darker. I am going to do it again for that final section but this ended up being very parallel to the edge of the lighter ink. So I am going to end up doing this one again, going over it again. So it's not as parallel because <laughs> that looked a little bit too perfect to me and I don't like it. <laughs> I'm removing the mask and I saw that there were some white spots in the grass of the better press image and I didn't like it. So I blended in some green ink over that as well. Now here you can see me adjust that mask and I'm just going to go over it again with my darker green ink. Um, this is a little bit of a pain because um, you really have to fully saturate that cardstock with the ink if you want to get rid of that edge you first ink blended. Now I want to create a little bit of a mat for this. So I'm first adhering a piece of gray cardstock down. This is Pebble from Concord and Ninth. It's one of my favorite gray cardstocks. And then I am propping this um, painted panel up on some foam tape. Uh, that's pretty much it. All that's left to do is add one or more of those sentiment strips from the Halloween Icons Better Press set. I'm going to prop that up onto strips of foam tape and I'm just going to do that at the bottom there because it's a very bottom heavy card and I like that the top is all white. I don't want to add anything to that. I want to keep these, like I said, clean and simple. So a fun, happy Halloween card with that gravestone there. And that's it. Those are all seven of the clean and simple Halloween cards that I made with the new Spellbinders Better Press Halloween collection. There are so, so many. I actually made four more and you can already see those in my um, Spellbinders Better Press Halloween release overview video. I will leave that linked in the description below if you just want to see all of the products, all of the new Better Press Halloween products and all of the cards that I've created with them so far. I hope you like these cards. I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up on this video. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Let me know which technique you like be liked best. The uh, masking, the propping the images up, just cutting them out like stamps, or just the super, super clean and simple cards that I started out with. And if you like this video, uh, don't forget to subscribe as well if you want to see more of my videos. There will definitely be more better press content on this channel because I'm slightly obsessed. And there will absolutely be more Halloween cards because um, I can't stop making them. I've already made 
over 20 Halloween cards this year. I don't think I have many people to send Halloween cards to, but um, I'm so enjoying making them, so I don't think I'm gonna stop. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!